Hi and welcome back to the channel. So last week we showed you around my friend's van and showed you all the deadly mistakes that were made in the construction of that self-built camper. Really didn't think I would be making a video about this van again. Um, but it seems you guys are really interested in how we've got on with putting it right. So I'm going to show you what we've done so far. First of all, we stripped all the electrics out. We've rerouted them. We've made off some cables. Um, we're currently sorting out the night heater. But we've built a little battery box stool there. It's got um, an isolator from the voltage sensitive relay now. That's been installed. We have uh, we've moved all the electrics so they're readily accessible. All the cabling now is in trunking and it's supported. Um, I've got a cable up there that needs sorted out yet. So this is the 12 volt stuff coming across. We'll make that off later and it'll come through a penetration here onto the fuse board. We've run some 240 in as well. That needs a socket on the front here. But this is what we're doing tonight. We are going to get that out because it turns out all the connections are inside the van. All the exhaust and air intakes are basically inside the van. So if you look up there, that shows you, I'm trying to show you, sorry. Hopefully you can see that. All the exhaust connections are inside the van so it's not surprising that we're getting fumes back because as far as i can see none of that is sealed so we're going to put a, a proper plate in there that will push all the connections outside that's if it misses this cross member we'll have a look anyway we've got one shot at it <laughs> that's for sure well, she's out. That is cheap. And there you go. That's the hole we have to play with now. <sighs> I've got to somehow try and get a hole out of this van and away from that cross member. Because we've already got a hole in there, we have to try and guide our huge bit <laughs> into the right location and we do that by putting a smaller hole saw in the middle that actually fits in that hole there and that should help us guide it in nice and steady yeah that drill isn't happy died in service now that's a hole <laughs> so what we've got to do now is treat the metal um, give it a little bit of a file up and drop that piece in make sure it fits that um, cowl flange whatever we're calling it today it does need a little bit of filing to fit but we'll do that now and while I'm here I've put a dropout vent in for the cooker in case that ever leaks. So I've come this side of the hole, the exhaust is going to go way down that way, away from where we are. So we should never get any back migration of fumes again. This is the plate that was fitted um, with the original night heater. Now you can see where it's been leaking, where the exhaust has been leaking. That was actually just above the floor. So them gases have been coming back into the cab. You can actually see on the exhaust where the dust, where the exhaust gases have been coming out. By fitting this, which is a proper turreted, they call that a turret, turreted um, plate, that pushes all the connections outside. Along with that big hole that we fitted, the one that you can see the light through down there, 
that makes all them connections on the outside. The hole's been prepped and sealed, the paintwork's been done as well. We've used CT1 just to fill any gaps. So when we actually put this plate in place, we will seal that up as well. So that'll be sealed to the floor. And as you can see there, all them connections are totally outside now. So any gas building up should be drawn away quite quickly. That's a nice good seal. Keep the outside out. Just drop that in, work it in. We marked up where the screws are, so we can just line everything back up. Job done. Right, four screws to go in now, and that is sealed in. So this is how it looks from underneath. We will go around and seal up all these edges, again with CT1. But if we were to ever have a leak now on the exhaust um, in the future, all the gases would accumulate in there, and they wouldn't be able to go anywhere really. They would just be drawn away by the, the wind. We have lift off with the heater. I've just checked it there. We have no smells, we've got nothing. And this is the first time we've fired it up. As you can see, we've put a vent below. That should make it easier for the heater to find air. So, and it'll also help recirculate the warm air back in. Where in the past it was all blocked off under that cabinet. So it was struggling to find air. But yeah, up and running, one job done. bit of heat kicking out of there what we're going to do is we're going to run this right up the temperature so I've got it on flat out and we'll see how it behaves new fuel line new exhaust uh, new turret all sealed up so yeah working fine remember this van so we've done some work on it We've improved a few things, certain things are missing. We've uh, opened up the ventilation for the night heater. We've done loads of work, but I'm gonna take you through exactly what we have done. So starting at the back, we, um, we've replaced all the gas system completely. Tested that, that's all working fine now. So we have the new gas cabinet there we have a, a bayonet fit in there copper from front to back not running through the compartment we've gone underneath along the side of the chassis and popped up exactly where we need it so in here we have fitted new hose um, on here don't know if you can see that there is dates so this is 2023 hose, it's valid for five years. So if you're getting a habitation inspection, they will look at the date stamped on that. If it's over five years, they'll recommend you replace a strap and a dropout vent. And we've took some of this rubber and just dropped it in the bottom. So that side of it is all tickety-boo now. So we've run insulated gas line all the way along underneath the chassis keeping it away from the habitation area and anywhere where there's a potential for it to be hit by stones and things like that we've actually stuck it in some containment as well a bit of flexible conduit so that should protect it for the rest of its life and let's see what we've done in the van so like i say we've come up through the bottom of the van um isolation valve there we've even got a little note on there telling the owners that they can access it through there so that isolates the oven or whatever goes in here next again new bit of hose um let's see if we can find that date for you it's probably upside down but there you go 2023 so whatever appliance goes in here next will have its own dropout vent as well and we've kept it as close as we possibly can to the exhaust uh, to the gas so if anything fails it'll leak and come down there try to keep it away from the night heater i hate working in little vans problem you have with little vans is there's not a lot of space to put anything 
and that was the trouble that we had. So we took all the electrics, we've moved all the electrics out from underneath where the oven was and we've put that in a new location. I'll show you that in a minute. But the big problem for me was the night heater. We struggled to find a new location for the night heater. So we ended up leaving it where it was and we've done a bit of, a bit of work on it and it works perfectly now. There is no smell of fumes or anything like that. So it's back in the, its original location. We've put a new turret on that basically takes all the exhaust connections and puts them outside the van. So that's a stainless steel turret there. We've opened up the front of this panel so it's got free flowing air into there and it'll blow out here. This can be moved so we can have the air blown up and as the air drops back down, it'll get pulled in there, recirculated and warmed up even quicker. But yep, we ended up replacing the fuel line. The fuel line was spent full of cracks. That was probably adding to the issue as well. And we've also changed um, the exhaust, put a new exhaust system on it. So a big concern for you guys was the electrics and they were a mess. Um, lots of comments about how bad the electrics were. In fact, the cable sizing and stuff like that wasn't too, wasn't too far off. It was the lack of isolation and um, all them little things that we <laughs> come to expect as standard now. So I've totally ripped all the wiring out and I redid it. And this is what's taken me so long. So I'll just show you what we've all the cables are now conduited up and out, uh, up and out there. All this lot's been rewired, new switch in. And we also put a two 30 volt socket in with two USBs for when they're on sites. Built my new storage box for the batteries. Um, two AGMs that are pressurized and sealed so they don't vent. Um, there's a little bit of room in there for expansion as they get warm. So this is the electrical system now. So obviously we've got our batteries in there, two AGMs. We have every cable now ducted, just for peace of mind for me, to be honest. We have an isolator here for the voltage sensitive relay. We have a battery isolator. Everything's labeled up as well, down on the side there. Little charger for when they're on site. 230 fuse board. Solar isolator there, which we can switch back on now. MPPT and all the circuits. I put it on a new little board, so all the terminals are covered, so nothing can get <laughs> should ever interfere with that. We've tidied up all the cables in there, fused the supply going up. So that's a nice little neat setup now, and you know we had to bear in mind the lack of room and space and that's the best I could come up with <laughs> it wants a little decorative panel on here or something just to just to keep your eye off it but yeah I'm happy with that so while I was doing the work they asked for a, a site hookup so we've installed one for them one socket um, I am going to put another one over there it just I've run out of time they're going to a festival so Things are looking a little bit better. Yeah, so that's it. Um, everything's now compliant with the regulations. So if anything was to happen with it, his insurance company really hasn't got any comeback on him. Um, you know, if they'd found the state that it was in previously, there would have been a few issues. Um, I'm not attaching the cooker. Um, obviously, it shouldn't be in there. It's not for me to put that back in. If they want to put it back in, it's up to them. I've advised them not to. Um, it's just how it is. So for me, that's a nice little job, all finished, all done, and it, it, it cost a little bit of money, but we had to do everything twice, and this is the problem. You do end up doing things twice. It is gonna bite you in the bum, it's gonna hit you in the pocket as well. So replacing all the electric, replacing all the gas, buying all the new parts for the night heater, probably would have been cheaper buying a new night heater, to be honest, but, it's all done now, peace of mind. It has got a carbon monoxide detector in because quite a lot of you has commented on that and said there wasn't one. But I'm happy now. I'm happy, safe in the knowledge that they can go off and enjoy themselves a lot more with a lot less risk. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. It has just been a bit of a recap. 
Um, as some of you know, Lisa's in hospital. Um, this thing's been my therapy for the last few few days. Uh, keep me out of trouble, keep my head straight, give me something else to focus on rather than what's going on at home. Um, I, I still do that. I still, I still give my attention, but it's a nice vent for me, a nice way to get out of things. She's had her operation, she's on the mend. Um, we'll keep you updated. But um, if you've enjoyed what we've done with this video and the previous videos, go and check them out. There's whole series on there on van building, on lights, on upgrades, on audio. There's a whole rake of videos out there. Go and check our back catalogue. And uh, if you like what we do, share it with your friends, subscribe, do all the good things, tick the boxes, thumbs up, leave us a comment. But yeah, thanks for watching and we'll see you again. Why not head over and check out our new website, www.thecraftyblinders.co.uk. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok and our Facebook group, The Crafty Blinder Van Builds. Thanks for watching.